Good evening. I want to welcome you to the telecast. My name is Kathy Ellis, and the name of this ministry is God's Power Surge, GPS for short, because I believe everyone needs direction in where they're going, and Jesus Christ is that direction. It's been a while since I've taped, it seems, uh, with everything going on. Um, so uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back uh, to minister unto you. And that's what God has laid on my heart to do, go out and minister where he leads. And that's what we need to do. We need to go by the leading of the Spirit because only he knows what, what he's doing. <laughs> I can only think and, and maybe get it half right of, of what the Lord is doing. Um, but he knows exactly what he's doing in my life, through my life, and around and about me. And I am so glad um, that uh, I made a decision to take off that old coat and put on a new. Listen to the words of this old song. Two coats. Two coats were before me and old and a new. I asked my sweet master what must I do? coat was ugly, so tattered and torn. The other, a new one, had never been worn. I tell you the best thing I ever did do. I took off the old coat and put on the new. The first man was earthy and made from the ground. Let me tell you, that is the best thing that you'll ever do, is change your mind. Say, Lord, I'm tired of living this way. I want your help. I need your help. Can't do it on my own. Pour out your heart to him. Turn from yourself in this world and turn unto him. He won't leave you or forsake you, and he has a brand new garment for you to wear. Hallelujah, a brand new life. He said, Behold, I come to make all things new. All we have to do is let him. Let him make us new. We like new and shiny things. So why don't you let the Lord make you new and shiny? Hallelujah. He is such a good father. And he has provision that would just blow your mind. Whether it be for healing, deliverance, finances. He provides, he opens doors, shut doors. It's amazing. It's amazing what he does. All we have to do is let him. Salvation. Salvation. That's all it takes. Making up your mind who you're going to serve this day and every day from the rest of your life. Get to know him through the scriptures. 
and through prayer. And prayer is just talking to God. When you talk to him, he talks back. And you'll be amazed at what he says to you. He has the loving words, the kind words, the words of instruction, the words of direction and correction. He doesn't condemn you and tell you you're stupid and all this stuff. That's the enemy talking. That's how you know the difference. That's how you know the difference. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And anything that has to speaks destruction or tries to kill your confidence or your happiness and joy, that's the enemy talking. Put him to flight. Say, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that's the word of God. That's the Bible. We have that. And we have that... Uh, example through the Jesus Jesus our living example on how we are to live but see people even misunderstand Jesus they go by what other people say instead of what they find out on their own by having that relationship with him getting to know him I challenge you to get to know the Lord to see if everything that you heard about him was true I bet you'll find out some things that you heard wasn't. Because God said he didn't come in to condemn the world. He came in to save the world. Because the world needed saving. Why? Because of disobedience and sin come in. And we were all born into that. We bore the image of Adam. We were all born into sin. And only Jesus could come and remedy that by the shedding of his blood. By the shedding of his blood. And he did it willingly because of the love that he has for us. Isn't it amazing? And sometimes when we're on the journey, we just have to stir up that that memory that we have. Lord, I remember when. And encourage ourselves. Just like David did when they come in and, and they were out fighting battles. And the enemy come in to the camp and took everything. The women, the and took a spoil, all the things that was good and worth anything, they took it. While they were out fighting one enemy, another enemy come in. And then everyone was mad at David. And he had to say, Lord, I remember when. I remember when. And he praised and worshipped God, and God said, Go and take your spoil. Go and get what the enemy took from you. And that's what the Lord tells us. Through worship and praise, he returns unto us what the enemy has stolen. Just like in the book of Joel, he said, whatever the canker worm and the palmer worm and, and uh, the locusts had, had eaten, he will restore. That's the God we serve. All Israel ever had to do was turn back unto him, and they were restored. He would start the restoration process. And that's all we have to do is turn unto him. And he starts the restoration process. Praise God. And sometimes the journey isn't always easy. Life still happens. But we have a God that helps us. That when the storms come through, we might be shaken, but we won't fall. Just like the man that built his house upon the rock. The storms and the floods came, but his house stood. Hallelujah, because he was built on the rock, and that rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen to the words of this song, Stir Up My Memory. I recently got to go back to my home church for homecoming and got to see some family I hadn't seen for a while, and it stirred up a lot of good old memories. But the memories of this song is the memories of of ourself and where we used to be and what God has done a work in us. Hallelujah. Stir up my memory. Stir up my memory. Help me to see where I've been and where you brought me to be. Stir up my memory. Stir up my memory. Help me to be 
like what you want me to be. I once would cheat and lie. Then the Lord, by my surprise, made me realize the way I was living wasn't prospering me. Stir up my memory. Stir up my memory. Help me to see where I've been and where you brought me to be. Stir up my memory. Stir up my memory. Help me to be, Lord, what you want me to be. to set me free from the bondage of sin and he said what I want God to do for you on your journey to encourage you yes there was a time that I was a despicable person before I gave my heart to the Lord we all were you know but God changes us just like when a carpenter hallelujah because Jesus is a carpenter when he comes into the house he makes the restorations on the inside first and then he starts on the outside you'll start seeing that glow Oh, hallelujah, of salvation and that look of peace and joy and love where there used to be just a scowl of, of stress and, and just hopelessness and despair. God changes someone's countenance, changes their look, hallelujah. They're no longer in despair, but they're happy, joyful, and at peace. And an only you can only have that when you're walking with Christ the way you should be. And I say the way you should be is a lot of people think they're walking with Christ, but they're not where they should be. And we're going to be um, in the book of Jude this evening. Uh, it's just one chapter, one book, that's it, just Jude. And it's right before Revelation. And I'm going to read that this evening because we need to encourage each other to keep the faith. Because there's a lot of things happening, even in the church world. It's not really pleasing unto God. But uh, those who know God and know his word will not be deceived. That's why it's so important that you know the word of God and that you uh, pray to God and get to know him one-on-one. -on -one. Because God will speak things into you. And sometimes the church will say, oh, that ain't of God. Oh, he ain't going to do that. <laughs> so watch and see. The Lord gave me a word. And uh, just watch and see. I had an evangelist friend of mine said I, that he'd gotten saved. And uh, the Lord told him he was going to go places that he had never heard of. Oh, he's been in Peru. He's been in India, Jamaica, Africa, and two different places to places he had never heard of. And people laughed at him. He didn't have no money to travel, but God provided. Hallelujah. So who are you going to believe? Believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Believe God. 
because he sees the big picture and he wants us to be at our full potential our full potential and we're only going to be that way in our full potential when we surrender it all unto him and say lord here am i and just allow him to work and move in us because we're not going to understand everything in this life we're not going to always understand what he says for us to do but when we get into it he'll start revealing things to us and they'll be like oh okay he loves us and he does reveal things unto his people that seek him out it says seek me while I may be found draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you he wants us to make the first move now the spirit and you know, sometimes you feel that drawing. But he wants you to move towards him. Get up and move towards him. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, here am I. Do a marvelous work in me. And Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I got to sing this song over in Africa and record it over there um, with one of the fellows over there that's a recording artist. <laughs> I was very honored, hallelujah, to, to sing this song and record it with him. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure. Let's go to the word. All right, we are in the book of Jude. And um, like I said, it's just one book. There's no chapters. <laughs> and um, reading about Jude, it's amazing. Um, this was Jesus' half-brother. Um, he says that he is the brother of James. And the research shows that it couldn't... Uh, be the James that he was referring to um, that was one of the disciples because he had already been martyred. So they come to the conclusion that it was James, Jesus' half-brother. So Jude is Jesus' half-brother as well, as he uh, precludes in here. So let's start reading. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So we are all, we are all <laughs> preserved in Jesus Christ and called. You say called to do what? Well, the Great Commission, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We'll heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And no uh, um, uh, poison shall harm us. Uh, it's at the, the end of Mark. Uh, so look it up. <laughs> and it goes on to say, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Earnest contention for the faith. Now, the reason why Jude was um, writing this letter 
because uh, he wanted to encourage people, no matter what's going on, to keep the faith. And we're going to read from four on, and we're going to find out what's been going on in the church house. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, which lift you up, uh, that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And he's talking about that faith that you first heard about that was delivered unto you um, through Jesus Christ. Keep that faith. And why is he saying this? He says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's saying certain people have come in and started condemning our Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. There has been some people crept into the church house and, and teaching and preaching another gospel. Um false prophets so we have to be very careful that's why we have to get to know jesus we have to get to know the word of god he says study to show yourself approved and the reason he says to study it is when we read it we learn so much about god and we learn things about ourselves because this is a living word and as you read it and study it you know god will reveal things unto you that you might need to change hello because change is good. We all have to change. We're all on that potter's wheel needing change. Because even a baby uh, doesn't stay a baby. It grows up, folks. So we need to grow up as well and change. <laughs> Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So he's saying, remember all those that didn't believe God, how they had to wander in the wilderness 40 years until that generation died? Even Moses didn't get to enter into the promised land, but he got to see it. You know, God let him see it. Hallelujah. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. Talking about the third of the angels that was beguiled by Satan, and they're awaiting their demise. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. So he's talking about even as Sodom and Gomorrah and their filthiness and what happened to them, these ones that crept in are doing some likewise things. And they're going against God's word and speaking evil against the dignities. Now, aren't we seeing that today where some leadership in the church house that shouldn't be there because God calls it an abomination But yet there's some heads of churches that are leading a gay lifestyle and speak against the word of God. It says that that is an abomination. That's why it's very important, folks, to know the word of God. Yes, church should be for everybody, and I believe church is for everybody. Let me phrase that different. Church is for everybody. But those who hold a high office in a church need to be living this word in its entirety. And what God calls an abomination, he hasn't changed his mind about that. He doesn't care what year it is. And the reason why he called that an abomination is because it's a sin. And sin gets our white garments dirty. And if we have a dirty garment, guess what? We're not getting into heaven. 
We have to stay clean and pure and holy. And the only way we're going to do that is staying close to God and going a, living according to what this word says. God isn't trying to be mean. He's trying to save us from a devil's hell by staying away from sin. That lifestyle is sinful and it's wrong because God's plan of creation, the way he had intended it from the beginning, is how he meant for it to be and to continue. But when sin crept in, oh boy, did it ever. And people started doing their own thing with their own imaginations, not having any thought towards God, and that's why we have it yet today. God didn't intend things to be that way. And he, wanted, he didn't want it that way because it was sinful. And sin can't enter into heaven. Yet Michael, the archangel, went contending with the devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. He didn't argue with the devil. He just said, the Lord rebuke thee. And if you look back in Deuteronomy 34, verse 5, it says, the Lord buried Moses. The place was kept from man. Man doesn't know where Moses was buried, but it says the Lord buried Moses. And it said in the commentary here that uh, the devil was, was arguing about Moses being a murderer and that he shouldn't be buried. On the earth. It's kind of a, you know, his accusations. Oh, well, you know. Just like he does with us every day. He accuses us. <laughs> and see, Moses was forgiven for what happened. And, you know, a lot of times people bring our past up after we had been forgiven. And the devil will come whispering in our ears, bringing up our past after we have been forgiven. And then there'll be false accusers. People saying things about you that isn't true. I don't know why people do that, but they do. I'm sure you've had it happen to you. I've had it happen to me. But instead of arguing... Just put the devil in his place. Say, I rebuke thee, devil. The Lord rebuke thee, is what the archangel said unto Satan. But these speak evil of the things which they know not, but that they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. So when people speak evil about things that they don't know of, <laughs> they are just... Uh, repeating what they've heard or they're making up lies or as brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves they corrupt themselves they're sinning and guess what sin doesn't enter into heaven the main thing is when you hear something about someone is you pray about it and don't repeat any of it don't be loose lips don't be backbiting because you corrupt yourself. You do it to yourself. And when you do it to yourself, then you're not going to have anyone to blame but yourself. Woe well unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for the reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are the spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead and plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom uh, is reserved the blackness of the darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh of Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince 
all of the ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of the advantage. But keep yourself in God's love. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, build up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating the garment of spotted by flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And with that word, I am out of time. So keep the faith. Keep the faith that you know and that you have learned by reading and studying your word and praying to the Lord Jesus Christ. And until next time, I hope you are blessed.